back with another video you guys know the deal we're doing intake manifold in this video as the title says it's only right but we're gonna go ahead and do a, a few things first uh we're gonna go ahead and get those headers back on um go ahead and do that first and then we'll get started on that intake manifold still i put a few little things on right here to get it on top gotta put that cover on then we can go ahead and start test fitting the intake manifold and i'll show that to you guys right now in a little bit as soon as we're able to get this on we're that much closer to that much closer to be able to hear this this cam guys once we're also able to get on the other pieces radiator fan all that so should be able to start it up real real soon y'all know the deal man that's it we just gotta bolt it up clean it up got a little oil grease all over it but there it is throwing the bolts right now all right there it is we tightened it a little bit tightened up those uh valve covers it's coming fellas it's coming Waiting on those new knock sensors the new harness should be getting in a few days yes sir Mira nomás. she gonna be fire all right now we're gonna go ahead and throw in this radiator get that on and then we'll go ahead and do those uh that wire and sensors knock sensors for that and then we'll go ahead and get started with the manifold just like that we got our knock sensors we got our wire the harness and the crank pulley bolt all right here ready to install and get go ahead and get started with the uh the rest of the process for the intake manifold and we got those right here we just got some cheapy ones from ebay because i mean like i said if they go bad you could just have your tuner tune them out you just do that don't really need it but i mean if they work good we'll just go ahead and keep them but we'll see i mean they look pretty fine though i think they'll be just fine so We'll just go ahead and install those real quick. We're gonna tighten them to 15 foot pounds and then we'll go ahead and attach the uh, harness. Got our harness here. Go ahead and plug those in. Should be good to go. Add a little silicone for extra security. Get the water out. Keep the water out. Got some silicone on those. So now we'll just go ahead and plug them in. We should be good to go. And if you want, you could also put silicone around the wire just to, you know, keep it from moving too much, <clears throat> going in and out from the seal and keeping that, keeping that water out, so. That's pretty much good. Just gotta plug it in. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw on this uh, coolant vapor line back on. And then we should be able to get to those uh, to the intake manifold pretty soon. And here's the intake manifold. We'll be installing here shortly. Like I said, it's a 102 millimeter you see right there 102 so we'll get that in right here coming up there it is a little better so i actually had to order this if you're from california um i got this one from amazon so if you're from california there's going to be a lot of um, these intake um these throttle bodies that you can't order or showing like red text that it cannot send to california because you know it's smog and all that shit so you just got to look through different ones i got i had to do two separate orders so i got one order just for the intake manifold and then i had to order this one separately um you get it from different websites this is from amazon as well so i just had to order the two separately um there's a bunch of these that are very similar that you could get on amazon so they'll be they'll claim to be a bunch of different brands but if they're this same style they're pretty much the same thing that's so that's exactly what i did here so here we go so on this intake manifold all the hoses are going to move to under 
right now we're putting in these um, gaskets and then we'll get on with the rest of the installation We're gonna put a little sealing tape for these um, these hose valves right here, just for a little extra security. Just go ahead and wrap it up just a little bit, and just put those back in. Then we'll go ahead and connect those hoses. Yeah, so this came as a whole kit. We got all the nuts and bolts we need, our fuel rails. Get those right there. So just gotta figure out a way to connect all those hoses. You should be good though. And for the remaining sensors or any sensors that you're gonna need, you're gonna have to take them off your old manifold, like this one right here. There we go. That one right there. That one's for the. It's one of the map sensors. Just gonna try to figure out how to put that onto the new manifold. There it is, just set that up. Try to get it fitted good, get it right. I'll try to figure out all the fittings right now after just bowing it down, getting it on. After slightly bending this line, should sit flush now. Yeah, so that definitely helped out. <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and bolt it down and keep the process going. We got all those bolts in. Right here, right here. All right, got that all nice and bolted down. Take that throttle box real quick just to see if there's any styrofoam, any little lint in there or anything. It might get in the way, clean it up, then on to the next. There it is, our throttle body. Looks pretty clean. Go ahead and get that put back on. Now we'll get this throttle position sensor off and the idle air control. We'll get both of those sensors off and then we'll try to figure out what we're gonna do with those and where we're gonna put them. That's where the TPS sensor is gonna go. As for this sensor, I was gonna plug in right above it, right there. That's it, those two have been placed. Pretty much where the uh, OEM ones are. Kind of like the same position, pretty similar. So now we'll just go ahead and put that back on. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do these fuel injectors. Um, these are these are AUS or OS injection, not sure. They're 38 pounds, so they handle pretty decent power. So we'll go ahead and get those installed. There it is right there. Go ahead and test fit it right real quick. So the fuel injectors did fit a little snug. So we'll just go ahead and put some white lithium grease real quick. Just to get, it a just to get them in there. And they should be good. Let's see. Yes, sir. Very good, slides right in. Now we'll go ahead and just do all of them. Just got our next one in, we got all of them right here. There we go, we got this side already. All good. We'll go ahead and do the other side. It's already getting pretty dark, so we'll probably just stop there. Get back to it tomorrow. And we're back the next day. Got a little more light now. Still, um. Finishing up this, we set those fuel rails on top just to protect those fuel injectors. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, as for the headers, we went and grabbed these. Um, these are some spares we had from a newer 5.3 from a 04. These don't have the outlets as mine do. So, so here are my original ones. So as you can see on these, since we have the, uh, so since these have, since this is the older model, it has the emission system. So that means we have ports right here. Um, this one only has one, I believe. The other one has two. So we'd have to find a way to block those. So it's better. So it's better to get newer heads or find a plate to block that hole. So if you're planning to do one of these on like an, I believe it's from the 99 to the 02, you have to find a way to uh, block those off or um, yeah, try to figure out how to weld it up or plug it up. But if you plan on doing this, you grab some um, 03, 04 headers, like the ones I have over there. They don't have that extra hole, so it'll be much easier just to plug those in and you should be good. 
we're almost done hooking up this intake manifold um, we just have a few more things we have to do um, as far as running hoses and stuff so we'll put that on pause real quick and then we're gonna get go ahead and get this serpent uh go ahead and get this bouncer bolt in so we get that fan on get that water pump on and get the rest of the things on so here's our new one right here you want to go ahead and get a new one of these as well if you're doing this you're gonna need one so we'll go ahead and do that real quick you're gonna need a tool also to put it in to get the wheel on you're gonna need a, a, a bolt a bigger bolt or they sell a tool so you go ahead and um get that wheel pushed in all the way with a big bow and a few spacers that should allow you to go ahead and push that in as you see here i'll show you guys just in a second what we used just like that it's on good to go just do something like this how to use a few spacers these are some like uh some shits for some weights you can use like a bunch of spacers or or a big nut as well just get that space and to able to get that a hook on so now we'll go ahead and put the new bolt that's good to go torque it down and on to the next and as far as torquing that new bolt back on the process is um supposed to do the old bolt first at 240 foot pounds but obviously our wrench doesn't go that high it yeah. goes to about 140. 240. about right there yep yeah, it's supposed to be 240 with the first pass and then take it off put the new one to 140 but so we'll just go ahead and do 140 for both and call it a day should be fine so we went ahead and did that that's all nice and tightened up now we can go ahead and move on with the next check it out though fellas she looking tough ta perra la troquita ta perra la troquita she coming you coming, she's looking tough, man. All right, so now we're about to throw the fan on. We got our new seals right here, new gaskets. Go ahead and do that. We cleaned up, we went ahead and cleaned up that whole area. So those go on, onto here, and that should be pretty quick, pretty easy. All right, there we go, we got all those nuts in. Now we're just gonna need to go ahead and tighten them all up. So now that we got the water pump on, we'll go ahead and get the power steering. Go ahead and throw that in next. Yeah, so the torque spec is gonna be pretty similar for these. You have a specific pattern, same thing, specific order seven uh seven foot pounds for each bolt so we're gonna go ahead and do that get those all bolted down we should be good right now we're gonna try to figure out the whole situation um we're able to route this one right here so this little crate and case vent right here just uh originally it was facing this way if you just if you have if you're using this manifold it should just turn uh like a 180 degree no problem but um We'll go ahead and figure that out right now. So this this hose right here, we got about a foot long. So about two feet maybe. So this hose, yeah, it's about two feet long that we got. It's gonna be for the brake booster. That one goes in right there. We just got it long enough to where it should reach the intake manifold, no problem. Route that through there. We have our plugs here underneath. As for the map sensor, we went ahead and grabbed this small little vacuum line. Second. Five thirty seconds, yeah. Yeah, right there. Five thirty seconds. Eighth inch is better though, if you could get it. Eighth inch would be better, but this is all we had available to us. But as you can see, it still works pretty good for us. So we'll go ahead and throw that on. And as far as for the brake booster, we're gonna throw that one on last because that one's gonna be the first fitting right here. So it's gonna be harder to get that on if we, or it's gonna be harder to get the back ones on if we have that one on first. So we'll probably do that one last. So for the map sensor, we're gonna slide that one on onto that last lip. It's a little tight, but it goes on pretty good. Now we're gonna plug that in. That plug should reach. There we go. So we got that map sensor on. You can see it. Got that map sensor on. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, we got that second line on now. 
Just got that one on. That one's gonna be for our fuel pressure regulator, which is right here. We just gotta figure out where we're gonna mount it, and we should be good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our PCV. We've got our hose hooked up to that one. This hose is gonna be 3 8 for our PCV. So that one's gonna go in our third slot right there. That first slot is gonna be for the, um, the brake booster. All right, we got that one on as well. And for our last one, it's gonna be the brake booster. And we should be good to go with all the hoses. There it is, we got that last one on, that brake booster. It's that first one, that thickest uh, cable or thickest hose you're seeing. So that's gonna be all four. I don't know, it might work from the back. Hopefully. There you go, that's all four. For the throttle, we plan on customizing the uh, stock bracket and try to figure, figure out a way to make that work. So here in our situation, the brackets for the fuel rail don't necessarily, or the holes that are supposed to line up, the holes for the bracket that are supposed to line up with the mount or the, the fuel rail don't line up necessarily, as you can see. So real quick, we're gonna go ahead and throw on this E85 sensor. We're plugging it, in, we're plugging it into the feed because that one's a little bigger than the return. You see a slight difference. That clips in right there. I just can't find a spot to mount it. Maybe you could put it right here. As for the wiring, we'll figure that out later. Obviously, you gotta wire that into the to the um, computer. In the meantime, we'll also start getting this fuel regulator set up. So now we're gonna start getting these fittings ready for the fuel pressure regulator. Obviously, depending on where you mount your regulator, everyone's gonna have different, you know, angles, degrees. So in my situation, I'll be using a 90 degree with the quick connect. Um, I'll be placing mine on the right side, on the driver's side, probably around this area, just so it's closer to the E85 sensor. And then um, I'm waiting on my uh, PTFE hoses to get here so I can go ahead and switch the hoses and get those hoses on as well. So the quick connect, that one's going to go onto the return line. Obviously onto the feed line, we have the E85 sensor. Um, I believe you could do either or, it doesn't matter. Um, you could put, if you figure out a way to put the sensor onto the return, that works as well. In my case, I'm doing it this way. There we go, snaps in. Just like that, slides on in. And also on this other end, we'll be connecting a union, an AN6 union. So as far as mounting mine, I plan on putting it somewhere about right there. All right, there we go. We got our fuel pressure regulator mounted, set. We got our feed right here, return. This one's gonna be, gonna be the feed to the rails. We're gonna run that one back here, all the way to this front one. And then that should be good as, as far as the regulator. Then we got our vacuum hose right here for the regulator. I'm gonna go ahead and make um, the custom brackets. These are the original ones that came with the intake manifold kit, but they were, like I said earlier, they were too tall. So we'll just go ahead and make some custom ones, cut them down to a, to a good little size, and then drill in um, some holes for some screws and we should be good. Right, there we go just like that we got all our brackets for our fuel rail pretty simple pretty easy so in the meantime we'll go ahead and get these headers back on got that first one in now we'll go ahead and do the driver's side got both headers on now i'm gonna go ahead and go under and get the rest they're getting those headers on we're pretty much almost done guys um all we pretty much have left is the wiring up that e85 sensor adding the fuel filter for the e85 and uh, that's pretty much it. And then soon we'll be able to start her up. We're gonna go ahead and throw in our new spark plugs. That's pretty basic. I'm not gonna show too much of that. So we'll go ahead and just throw those in real quick. So we got our fuel rail back off. We're gonna go ahead and exchange it for some of this. It's PTFE hose for E85. There we go, got that new line on. All right, there we go. We throw on our 180 right here. Hose all the way around into the one that feeds the rails. So I could do more in-depth um, 
you know how we did the system later but that pretty much covers it man all we have really left is uh, wiring up the 85 sensor and then um, figuring out a better way to position the uh, throttle body and that's pretty much it so right now we're just going to finish up putting a few pieces together we pretty much got everything done. All right, we got the alternator on. Now we're about to get this serpentine belt. That's gonna sum up this video though. I'll probably throw in doing the rest of the E85 sensor and then other little things in a different video next video. But um, that's pretty much it. You guys seen it, nothing too crazy, nothing too hard. Make sure you have all your parts because you know we were running back and forth to stores and shit. But appreciate you guys for watching. You know the deal. Like, comment, and subscribe to the boy. But yeah, thank y'all for watching, man.